Hi, this is Brian Kim, and this video is directed towards those who are having difficulty performing this technique and those who are concerned about the safety of this technique. And so some people are concerned about pushing on the zonules and causing zonular stress. Well, if you look at the schematic, the chopper is placed out to the equator, but you can angle it in such a way that you're holding and supporting the lens from below with the chopper. And then you drive the figure tip down as the chopper is raised upward. And so for illustrative purposes, I'm actually gonna just pull up on the chopper and then push down on the figure tip after I lift. And so I'm gonna show this in slow motion. Again, I want you to see that the chopper is out to the equator in typical horizontal chopping fashion, but I'm supinating my hand and I'm rotating and tilting that chopper tip upward and you can see I'm lifting the lens up and if I pull any harder it's going to come out of the bag and as I'm lifting you can tell that the lens is being supported from below and I'm lifting up and then as I do that I push down on the fake tip into the lens material and it divides the lens and so again this is a purely mechanical technique again you're going from below and then you're having both instruments meet but again, just to make a point, I'm lifting the lens first with the chopper, and then I'm driving the fake tip into the lens, and then if I break the lens. And so I'm gonna show this again under with multiple examples. I'm going around in the equator, lifting up the lens. I'm even just cheese wiring through the lens material for that case, because that was a very soft lens, which you can do. And again, I'm rotating, I'm tilting that tip up a little bit, up and then I'm driving the FACO into the lens material and it fractures the lens. So again, I'm lifting up with the chopper and then pushing down with the FACO tip and it fractures the lens. And I'm doing this to just show you that I can lift as I do this technique. That's not how I normally do it, but uh, in order to show as an example of how I am not causing zonular stress. I'm lifting the lens with the chopper and then pushing that, pushing the fake tip into the meat of the lens and it fractures the lens. And as you can see, there's no ultrasound or vacuum performed at all during this, these maneuvers. It's just with irrigation only. Um, and again, this is really primarily for il illustrative purposes because I am able to um, do this simultaneously because it happens rather quickly in the eye. It's, it's difficult to really ascertain what's happening. And so I am first lifting with the lens and hopefully you'll be able to appreciate that that's, that is what's happening. Again, lifting the lens, supporting it from below and then stabbing the lens uh, with the figure tip, pushing down as I'm lifting up with the chopper. And this causes no zonular stress. And so for those who are concerned that this is causing zonular damage or pushing down on the lens. I hope that this does illustrate uh, this point very clearly. Please bear in mind that bringing the instruments together simultaneously is the best way to do this technique. I'm only showing this sequentially for illustrative purposes. The other issue is some people are having trouble with uh, obtaining an effective chop. So first of all, you have to be comfortable with performing horizontal chop. Getting that chopper out to the equator and underneath the anterior capsular axis opening and getting it in proper position is very important for this technique and you have to be very comfortable with this maneuver. And if you're not, that's the very first step. The next issue is you have to place your hands in a very different position from traditional chop and it's in a more vertical position. So the chopper is being out to the equator and now the chopper, the phaco tip is placed in position. You saw how I lifted my hand in a more vertical position with both the chopper and the phaco tip. So it happened very quickly. So let me show this again under slow motion. The chopper is being placed out under the equator right now. You can see I'm sliding with my left hand and now I'm placing my phaco tip more vertical to perform the double chop maneuver right now. So you can see I'm using my pinky to support myself against the patient's face in order to stabilize my fingers and the chop is performed. Now the, the cross chop is being performed. The chopper is being slid out under the equator here 
and then the cross chop is maneuver is performed. Now the faker handpiece is placed in the more uh, neutral position, and now um, faker is being initiated. So this is another example on the right eye. You can see the chopper is being placed out, and then the faker tip is placed in a vertical position. The double chop is performed, and then the chopper is going to be rotated. Now slid under the uh, uh, anterior capsular opening, rotated into position, and then the double the cross chop is performed. Uh, and all that happened very fast. So let's do that one more time. The chopper is being slid out to the equator right here, and I'm going into uh, super slow motion here. Now the chopper is rotated into normal position, and then um, you can see that I'm, I'm supinating my hand, and the chopper is in proper position now, in the ready position for the chop. Now you can see my faker tip now is being placed in a more vertical position, as you can see here. And that is in order to be able to um, stab the lens more effectively for the double chop. And then you crack. I'm cracking right now the lens. And then I'm rotating my hand, pronating, sliding the chopper out to the equator again. And then I'm rotating it back, supinating. Now I'm ready for the cross chop maneuver. And what's interesting is the phaco tip doesn't move here at all for the cross chop. Now you see my phaco tip is being placed in a more neutral downward position, a more horizontal position, and that's when phaco is initiated. And so you will see this in this uh, video example again. The cross, the the, fake, the chopper, excuse me, is being placed out, rotated, supinating my hand. And again, the chopper is in place in a, a vertical position. And uh, you can see I'm lifting that lens for illustrative purposes. Now I'm going to rotate and tilt the fake tip more vertically. And then both instruments are met in the middle and the lens is chopped. So let's review. I hope that I've shown that this technique does not cause zonular stress. In fact, because I'm supporting it from below, the lens is being held by the chopper, and then as you drive the faker tip into the lens, you're holding the lens from below, and it causes the mechanical fracturing. And so for those who are concerned with safety, I would challenge them and say, with this technique, I don't believe there's zonular stress. In fact, I feel with sculpting, there's more zonular stress because you actually have to support, depend upon the support of the zonules as you push down on the lens material while you're sculpting. And so I really feel that sculpting causes more zonular stress, whereas this technique is uh, zonular uh, stress neutral. There's no stress at all um, because of the way the lens is supported by the chopper from below. In fact, this is why this technique is more versatile. You don't have to depend upon Having to be able to spin the lens in the bag, you don't really have to depend upon significant zonular support feedback with this technique. You're able to support the lens from below with the chopper and then drive the phaco tip into the lens material and fracture it in two pieces uh, independent of any of these variables, which increases the versatility of this technique. As far as the technique itself, again, uh, you have to place the instruments in the more, more vertical position. As you can see in this illustration, that phaco tip needs to be in a more vertical position in order to be able to stab the lens and create some leverage so that the lens material is going to be chopped effectively. If the phaco tip is more in a horizontal position, it's just going to slide across and just score it from the top. And uh, with the more vertical position, you can see the chopper tip is more in a sideways position. And uh, as you tilt the phaco tip vertically, you lift up with the chopper to support it, and then you drive down into the meat of the lens. And those vector forces will allow an effective chop. So to recap the two critical steps, you want to get the chopper out to the equator and over supinate. So you can see that tip is actually tilted quite a bit. Again, I want to go under slow motion. You want to supinate your hands and you're rotating and tilting the chopper so that it's sitting more vertical. You can see the tip of the chopper, uh, and you can see the actual flat edge of the chopper tip is more sideways. 
And the reason why you want it to be more sideways is because it's holding and supporting the lens from below. And again, you're seeing that in super slow motion. I'm rotating, supinating, holding that chopper more vertical. You can see the tip. It's more kind of in a sideways position. And now you want to tilt the fake tip more vertical, and then you fracture the lens. That was normal speed. This is half speed. Look at the fake tip right here. Tilt, and then meet in the middle and chop. Again, this is a maneuver in super slow motion. Again, focus only on the fake tip. You can see now the fake tip is tilting vertical right here. Vertical tilt, vertical tilt, vertical tilt. And then with the lens being held from below with the chopper, you're going to drive the fake tip into the lens and the lens is fractured. I hope this detailed explanation will help you perform the technique and I hope you understand why this technique, I feel, is more effective and more versatile under a variety of situations, mechanically fracturing the lens with support from below and above. Thank you for your attention.